Hello friends, here in this video we will see a problem in which we are going to solve it by using Macaulay's method. Here is the question. It is given that a simply supported beam subjected to the central point load capital W for this determine maximum slope and deflection. And here is the diagram that for this simply supported beam A, B, we have to find out where is the maximum slope and deflection. And here we will solve this question by using Macaulay's method. So in the data, here I'll write down slope, it is denoted by theta. We have to find out theta max and deflection is denoted by y. So we have to find out y max because of the action of this load w this beam will deflect and we have to find out where will be the maximum slope and the maximum deflection deflection is the vertical distance up to which the beam is bent and from the original axis of the beam so we have to find out the maximum deflection and slope slope is the angle by which the beam is getting deflected and that angle is in terms of radians. So now with the question available to us, let us try to get the solution to this problem. Now while writing the solution to this problem, the first thing would be calculation of support reactions. Now if we look into the diagram, here it is a simply supported beam supported at A and B respectively. At A, I'll call the reaction is RA. At B, the reaction is RB. Now, this load is central having the distances from each of the supports as equal L by 2, L by 2. So, RA value will be half of the total load. Similarly, RB will be half of the total load because this total load gets distributed equally at each of the supports. So here I'll say that since the given simply supported beam is symmetric. Symmetric means the load which is kept on the beam will have equal distance from both the supports. So since it is symmetric, therefore the total load will be distributed equally at each of the supports. So therefore, when the total load gets distributed, RA is equal to RB and that is equal to W by 2. Now, here we have Ra is equal to Rb and that is equal to W by 2. So we have got the values of support reactions. Now after that, since we have to solve this problem by using Macaulay's method, in Macaulay's method, we take a section over the beam at any given distance x. So here after this, I'll say that now consider a section which is x dash x at a distance x from left hand support which is at a that is from a so here we will consider a section x x x at a distance small x from the left hand support that is from a so for that here i'll again quickly draw the diagram which is given Here we have a simply supported beam which carries load capital W. Its distances are given L by 2 from A and L by 2 from B. Now what we will do is 
here we have considered a section at a distance small x from point A. So, I will take that section and when we are solving it by using Macaulay's method, the section should be far away from point A. It means we will consider it extreme far away from A and just before B. So, here I am taking the section at this location. So, this is the section xx and its distance is small x from point A. Now, after taking this section, since we have also found out RA and RB, here RA is equal to W by 2, RB is equal to W by 2. The next thing would be, we would be taking the moments at this section. So, after this, I will say that taking moments at section xx. Now, here when we are taking the moment, in this case, our consideration would be, that is while taking the sign, we will consider all clockwise moments as positive and anti-clockwise moments we will take them as negative so here if i see this reaction at a ra it is acting upward so when i take the moment it comes in clockwise direction so therefore when i am taking the moments that is called as moment at xx is equal to it is ra into x this is the first term then w into here we have x minus l by 2 because i want the distance from the load up to the section so this distance is it is x minus l by 2 so here we have minus w into x minus l by 2 and this moment at xx it is given by this is equal to ei d square y by dx square because the value of moment at xx by using the Macaulay's method can be written in terms of ei d square y by dx square. Now I will write it in this form that therefore I will bring ei I will replace mxx by ei d square y by dx square it is equal to ra into x minus w into into bracket x minus l by 2 next now i will be integrating this equation so i'll say that therefore integrating once we get so after the integration here ei is a constant it will remain as it is now d square y by dx square that will become dy by dx after integration. Here we have ra and this is x. So that will be x square by 2 plus the constant of integration which is c1 then minus w into this term. So it is x minus l by 2 whole square divided by 2 so now after getting this integration here i'll put the value of ra ra was w by 2 so therefore ei dy by dx is equal to w by 2 into x square by 2 plus c1 minus here we again have w it is minus w into i'll keep this term as it is x minus l by 2 whole square and here we have divided by 2 so i'll keep it as w by 2 now after we have completed this first integration i'll call it as equation number one this is the first equation next since 
Macaulay's method is also called as the double integration method. We have to integrate this equation again. So I'll write down integrating again we get now when I am integrating this here we have ei dy by dx so ei is a constant it will remain as it is next the integration of dy by dx is equal to y then what I'll do this is w and this will become 4 so w by 4 I'll take it as common or a constant then integration of x square that is x cube by 3 then plus c1 so here if I integrate this with respect to x so this will be plus c1 into x now when I am integrating it twice here we have another constant which is constant c2 because it is double integration so we are going to get two constants next this will be the first term now we have minus w by 2 I will take it as it is then we have x minus l by 2 square so that will become x minus l by 2 cube divided by 3 then if I simplify this it will be ei into y is equal to w by this will become 12 w by 12 4 into 3 x cube plus c1 x plus c2 this will become minus w 2 into 3 that will become w by 6 then we have x minus l by 2 whole cube so this is the second equation for us now once we have reached up to this equation we see that there are two constants c1 and c2 these constants are to be calculated by using the boundary conditions and what will be the boundary condition first i'll say that when the distance x is 0 that is at point a the deflection is 0 because at this point it is supported so deflection will be 0 so I will say that applying boundary conditions and that boundary conditions are at x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 so this boundary condition when I put in this equation so put in equation number second so therefore here I'll get y value I'll put that as 0 so ei into y that becomes 0 is equal to x here I'll put the value 0 this term becomes 0 here this is 0 plus c2 we have to take the terms only up till the first section when we are putting the boundary conditions we have to don't we don't have to consider this section so only up till this here I'll get c2 as 0 so therefore the value of c2 becomes 0 this is from the first boundary condition now I'll use the second boundary condition in that I'll say that when the distance x that is equal to capital L again the deflection is 0 so the second boundary condition is at x is equal to L y is equal to 0 so now again put this boundary condition in equation number second so we have in equation second if I put this boundary condition ei into y since y becomes 0 so this term is 0 so therefore 0 is equal to on the right hand side I have w by 12 I'll keep it as it is w by 12 x this value is l so it is x cube means it is l cube then plus c1 into x so plus 
c1 into instead of x we have l plus c2 is 0 so plus 0 then minus w by 6 here we have x so instead of x I will write down l minus l by 2 whole cube. So when we simplify this equation we are going to get the value of c1 so here I will say that therefore 0 this will be w l cube by 12 plus c1 into l minus w by 6 now this term if I simplify this will be 2l minus l cross multiplication divided by 2 into 1 that is 2 so it becomes l by 2 and it is whole cube so it becomes l cube by 8 so we have l cube by 8 now after this we have 0 is equal to w l cube by 12 I will bring this term minus w l cube 6 into 8 that becomes 48 plus c1 into l so therefore I will keep c1 into l on one side because I require the value of c1 is equal to shifting these terms onto the other side so minus w l cube by 48 will become plus w l cube by 48 w l cube by 12 which is plus that will be minus so therefore on further simplification this will be w l cube by 48 minus 12 into 4 that would be multiplied to make it 48 and similarly here we have 4 w l cube in the numerator so therefore here we are going to get the value of c1 into l as minus 3 w l cube by 48 next l is getting multiplied here if i send it into the denominator it will divide this term so therefore c1 value will come out to be the answer which i have from this as i can see here this is 3 and this will be cancelled out it becomes 16 l and single l cancels here so here it is l square so minus w l square by 16 so c1 is minus w l square by 16 now this is the value of c1 so hence if we put the value of c1 and c2 in equation 2 we are going to get the slope equation because we are going to get the deflection equation because y is called as the deflection and if we put the value of c1 in equation 1 we are going to get the slope equation because dy by dx is called as the slope so here i will say that after reaching at this stage therefore put c1 in equation number 1 so now put c1 in equation number 1 and in equation 1 we are having ei dy by dx I will write this completely therefore ei dy by dx is equal to this is w by 4 I will give it as w by 4 x square now it is plus c1 so i'll put the value of c1 and c1 was negative that is minus w l square by 16 w l square by 16 then i'll keep all values as it is so here i have minus w by 2 into x minus l by 2 whole square then therefore i want dy by dx term on one side because that is called as the slope so dy by dx i am keeping it on one side ei here it is getting multiplied if i send it onto the other side it gets divided so i have one upon ei here we are having w by 4 x square 
minus w l square by 16 minus w by 2 into x minus l by 2 whole square. So, I will say that this is the slope equation. I will call it as equation number 3 and therefore, I will write down equation number 3 is called as slope equation and from this equation slope at any given distance can be calculated. So, we can find out slope at any location because if we see in equation 3 we are having x as the variable. So, if we go on putting different values of x that is different distances we are going to get the different values of slope because e i is a constant and now if I can explain the bending of this beam in such a way that when the load is acting this beam is going to bend in this manner. The simply supported beam when it is subjected to point load at the center it gets bent in this manner. At the central part where the load is acting here the deflection is maximum but slope is 0 at this location. Slope is denoted by dy by dx so dy by dx is 0 at this location and if I see at point A here the deflection is 0 but slope is maximum. This is theta, theta indicates the slope. So, slope is maximum here so dy by dx will be a maximum value here. Similarly, at point B here also if I draw a tangent to the curve we will be getting dy by dx as maximum value. This will indicate the maximum slope. So, now I will calculate slope at point A and at point E that is the maximum value because in the question they were saying to calculate maximum slope. So, I will say that therefore, maximum slope will be at point a and b. So, hence first I will put at a x value will be 0 putting x is equal to 0. So, I will write down therefore put x is equal to 0 in equation number third and hence here we are getting in equation 3 dy by dx that is the slope and it is at A. So, the slope at A is equal to 1 upon Ei which is a constant into bracket. Here if I am putting 0 this term would be 0. So, the first term becomes 0 here I am having minus WL square by 16 then minus W by 2 is there outside the bracket. If I put 0 here, x becomes 0 here I have minus L by 2 and its square will be L square by 4. So, into L square by 4. Hence, this would be equal to 1 upon E i minus W L square by 16. This will be minus W L square by 8. So, therefore, dy by dx at a will be equal to 1 upon e i. Now, if I simplify this that will become taking the negative sign outside here I will have in the denominator this will come out to be 16 and in the numerator here I have w l square since minus I have taken common here I will be having 
the value as plus this will be so here we have the value this will be multiplied by 2 and 2 in the numerator so plus 2 w l square so therefore here this would be come this would come out to be dy by dx at a is equal to minus this will be 1 wl square plus 2 wl square that is 3 wl square by 16 so this is the value of the maximum deflection which occurs at point a this is the first answer so now here we are getting the first answer that is the slope at point a and this is the maximum slope similarly we will find the maximum slope at b so i'll say that after this for the maximum slope at point b here i'll keep the value of x is equal to l because we want to find the slope at point b so i'll say that therefore put x is equal to l in equation number 3 so in equation 3 we have dy by dx we want to find it at b and that is equal to 1 upon ei constant now we have w by 4 x instead of x i'll put the value as l so l square so w l square by 4 minus w l square by 16 and here this will be minus w by 2 as it is instead of x i'll put the value as l l minus l by 2 whole square so i'll go on simplifying this so here we have dy by dx at b which is maximum slope 1 upon ei this will be wl square by 4 as it is minus wl square by 16 as it is now this bracket here we have 1 in the denominator so this will be 2l 2 into l minus l into 1 which is l upon 2 so that will be l by 2 whole square which gives me l square by 4 as the value so at the end here we have minus w by 2 is outside the bracket this complete term we have found out l square by 4 so l square by 4 into w by 2 so that becomes w l square by 8 now i'll simplify this 1 upon ei here i can take the denominator if i take the lcm that com comes out to be 16 here i have to multiply by 4 in the denominator to make it 16 similarly 4 will be multiplied in the numerator here this will remain minus w l square by 2 as it is for 8 i have to multiply by 2 in the denominator same thing i'll multiply in the numerator so minus 2 into w l square so here we have dy by dx at b is equal to 1 upon this will be ei as it is now here we have 4 minus 1 4 minus 1 minus 2 so this will be 4 minus 1 that becomes minus 3 minus 2 that becomes here we have this will be 4 minus 1 and minus 2 so that becomes 4 this will be minus 3 4 minus 1 that becomes minus 3 here this will be plus 3 minus 2 that becomes 1 so we are having w l square by 16 so hence if i can write this it would be dy by dx at b is equal to w l square by 16 ei and this will be the second answer for us because we have found out the maximum slope value at each of the location now 
after getting the slope equation we were having the deflection equation in equation number second so in equation second we are having y value here if i put c1 c2 i'll form the deflection equation so therefore put c1 and c2 in equation number second so therefore we have ei into y is equal to w by 12 x cube it is plus c1 into x so i'll put the value of c1 which was minus w l square by 16 into x plus c2 was 0 so no need to write that minus w by 6 w by 6 which is negative into this bracket that is x minus l by 2 whole cube so after forming this equation here i'll keep y on one side ei here it is getting multiplied if i send it on to the other side it becomes divided and here i have w by 12 x cube minus w l square by 16 x minus w by 6 into x minus l by 2 cube so this equation which we have formed i'll keep it as equation number 4 so therefore from equation number 4 deflection at any given location in the beam can be calculated and therefore i'll say that maximum deflection for the beam given in the problem will be at the center at the center the deflection is maximum as we can see from this diagram where the load is acting at the central portion here the deflection is maximum which is y max and this distance is l by 2 so to find maximum deflection i'll have to keep x value as l by 2 so hence put x is equal to l by 2 in equation number 4 so here we have y is equal to 1 upon ei into the bracket w by 12 as it is now instead of x i'll put l by 2 so l by 2 whole cube minus w l square by 16 next instead of x i'll put l by 2 then minus w by 6 instead of x i'll put l by 2 minus here we have l by 2 whole cube now here is the complete deflection equation in which we will get maximum deflection from the last term it is clear l by 2 minus l by 2 this will become zero so y is equal to 1 upon ei this will be w into l cube this 2 cube that becomes 8 and 8 into 12 that becomes 96 so now here i'll simplify this the first term was wl cube by 96 minus this will be wl cube upon 32 16 into 2 and this last term is already zero because l by 2 minus l by 2 this would be cancelled so this becomes zero so no need to write this term here on simplifying this 1 upon ei here i'll get in the denominator 
as the LCM. In the numerator, this will be WL cube as it is. Now this is 32. To make it 96, I'll have to multiply it by 3 in the denominator. So similarly, I'll multiply 3 in the numerator. So that becomes minus 3W L cube. Therefore, Y is equal to 1 upon EI. This will be minus 2W L cube upon 96. So on cancellation, this will become 48 yes so therefore y becomes minus w l cube upon 48 ei this is the third answer and the deflection which we have got this is the maximum deflection because we have taken distance as l by 2 to get the maximum deflection now if we look into the problem, the question was to determine, determine the maximum slope and deflection and we have found out the maximum slope at A and B and maximum deflection at the central location and here we have the answer and with this we complete the problem.